I'm Crystal Patino, and we'll be covering Chapter 16, The United Nations and the Search for Peace, on pages 478 to 479. These are the key terms that we'll be defining and overviewing. As our world continues to face many international disputes, we find different ways to settle problems with little or no violence. Thus, global political organizations, such as the United Nations, have been developed to negotiate peace and prevent war. The United Nations, or UN for short, includes a General Assembly, which is a group of representatives under the United Nations from over 200 nation states. And within the UN and its General Assembly is the Security Council, which is a council under the United Nations from countries like France, Britain, the US, China, and Russia, that have the specific power to veto large decisions and provide armed authority. The UN develops treaties held in a world stage called the International Court of Justice, or the World Court, which is located in The Hague, Netherlands. Now, the UN was influenced by an earlier example of a global search for peace, which was the American Peace Society, established in 1828. The American Peace Society at the time was made up of Quakers, in which founder William Ladd and his members promoted world peace, hence the purpose of the United Nations. And in an attempt to negotiate with peace, the United Nations can only decide how to help countries with internal affairs and disputes through treaties, laws, and some armed authority. But when such powerful countries like those that are part of the Security Council cannot make an agreement, peace movements, or loose and shifting combinations of individuals and groups who come together to promote peace or prevent war, may occur in order for citizens to rebel without violence. Both Mohandas Gandhi leading the nonviolent resistance movement in India and the anti-war movement during the Vietnam War are great examples of major peace movements. Both provoked nonviolent resistance for human justice. Though peace movements have been successful in the past, sometimes they aren't an option to those who are experiencing injustice and corruption firsthand, as seen in Syria. Although the UN cannot necessarily demilitarize or completely stop war, they do in fact prevent larger catastrophes. Thousands of Syrians have lost their lives in the conflict between forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad and fighters opposed to his rule. Now with the introduction of chemical weapons and possible Western involvement, an end to the conflict still doesn't seem to be in sight. But how did it all start? The uprising has its roots in the southern Syrian city of Daraa, where protests erupted in March 2011. Security forces reportedly opened fire on demonstrators, killing several. Footage filmed on mobile phones, allegedly by people on the ground, emerged online. At this stage, impossible to verify, but the only way Western media got to see what was happening inside Syria. All of a sudden, it was less like public unrest and more like civil war. Rebel forces advanced, but government troops continued to fight back, using overwhelming force to bombard areas they didn't control. The devastation was clear in Homs, levelled not long after Assad had audaciously addressed a crowd of his supporters, assuring them of victory. The conflict continued to escalate, with a general in the Free Syrian Army the force formed largely of defectors from Assad's military, claiming they had received help from Western governments. Russia and China opposed any involvement. The international political crisis as complex as the military one inside Syria. Scores more people lost their lives. Hundreds of thousands lost their livelihoods, fleeing the country as refugees. But even border regions weren't safe from violence. Opposing forces continued to fight for the upper hand, but mid-2013 saw chemical weapons used in an attack on civilians, killing dozens. A UN inspection team was called in. Fingers were pointed at government forces. Information available from a wide variety of sources points to the Syrian regime as responsible for the use of chemical weapons. Western involvement became an inevitability. 
I chose to apply symbolic interactionism perspective to the concept of this section of chapter 16 because certain symbols were and are used to recognize a person's stance on global political conflicts. Hence, the peace sign was a symbol for anti-war during the Vietnam War. And in more modern times, the UN imprinted on a blue cap represents the UN soldiers, while the blue flag with a map of the world located in the center represents the United Nations as a whole. So now my question to you is, how can the United Nations peacefully put an end to an internal conflict of a country if there is a disagreement within its own Security Council?